The following is an encore presentation of stories from the Duralong Transformation Centre. And the time is nine, coming up to ten minutes past ten here on Rima Central Coast. As I promised you before the news, we're talking to Amy from the Duralong Transformation Centre. Morning to you, Amy. Good morning. Nice cold morning at Duralong, I'm guessing. You have any frost there this morning? Freezing. Freezing, freezing. Hot in summer, cold in winter. Perfect. How do you cope with the cold weather? Don't. You don't? <laughs> You're a hot weather person, Yes, yep. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a good place to be anyway. It is. It's it? absolutely beautiful. Yeah, and you're quite snug in those little cabins. Yes. Yeah, the cabins are beautiful. We've got we've got heating in there. Yeah, yeah. So you, you, you're good. You're good. Now, Amy, I said before the news, I told our listeners that you have a really interesting story. Um, and I think it's probably different to a lot that we've heard because you were brought up in the church. You were a member of Hillsong. Tell I us was. a little bit about your, your church, your Hillsong. I was um, raised in the Hillsong Church. I um, I went to a Christian school um, from all the way through, up through high school as well. And um, I went right through youth group at Hillsong as well. Mm. So I committed Christian from a very early age. Yes. From a very early age. Yes. Yeah. And you were telling me earlier that you met somebody at youth group. Yeah, I met my husband at youth group that I was married to. Yeah. Yeah. So somebody looking in at your life at this stage would be thinking, ah, oh, Amy's living a blessed life. She's um, She's got a church. She's comfortable with her religion. She's got a husband through church. Um, all looks good. I had it all. You had it all. Mm. Yeah. Um, didn't last, did it? No, what, no. What happened? I was um, married for 15 years and... Um, and still going to church quite, during yeah. all this time? Yeah. Um, started to fall away from church. Um, had two beautiful girls, Georgia and Paris, mm. um, and we had a mortgage and I had a hairdressing salon that I brought. I brought at 22, got married at 22. Then we went on to buy, we, we invested in another business, which was which was a business that was open a lot of hours and, mm. um, and my husband was struggling and, um, yeah, our marriage um, fell apart after that and um, um, he ended up, um, having having an affair and um, mm. it um, was really hard, you know. He, he denied it and um, said that it wasn't true, and you know it really made me feel like I was I was going crazy. You know, I had to know what was going on. And yeah. um, and how old were the kids at this stage? Um, Georgia, my eldest, was in high school, but Paris was only younger. Yeah. It, she was in she was still in primary school at the time. So did you split up? Um, yeah, we did. It was it was slowly. Um, I, um, you know, it it didn't just happen overnight. It happened over over a period of time. You know, I tried so hard to to save that marriage. I, I did everything. You know, I really believed I um, met him in God's house, and yes. it was. Um, you, you made know, your vows for you know till death do us part. That's right. You mm. know, and and I was raised. I've I've been raised in a Christian family, and believe that marriage is forever and and um unfortunately sometimes we don't have control over people you know we we don't have that control over everyone we, we really only have control over ourselves some non-christians think that we you know once you become a christian that's it life's going to be a bed of roses for you that's right there's no bed of roses for you at this stage in your life no it? not at all yeah so you're left alone um your husband leaves you you've got one kid at school and one 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 youngster as well um presumably the mortgage still has to be paid yeah i had the mortgage and the two girls the on my own yeah yeah i had a salon the hair salon still by myself and i was paying the mortgage by myself and um yeah things were pretty hard yeah so how bad did things get for you pretty bad mm. yeah pretty bad at one point there um we actually had to rent the house out and go and live with my parents mm. um to survive my mum and dad they're fantastic they they really looked after us and um took care of us and and helped us we why we why we were able to get back on top of the mortgage again yeah were you angry at god or? i was very yeah i, I think very, i would be as well very i mean you've been a faithful servant churchgoer uh, you know a believer uh, met your husband at church like all these programs we have on the radio say it's a good place to meet your spouse and then this happens. Yep. Yeah. So when did the addiction come into your life? I um, had a friend that, um, you know, 
I, I'm one of those people that I like everything to um, be organised and um, I like to start my week being organised and I had a friend who introduced that that I worked with and mm. um, she introduced me into to ICE and, um, you know, we were we would clean the house and I was able to get on top of everything. It started off as a weekend thing yeah. and then, um, you know, the next weekend I was sort of like, oh, have you got any more? Um, and then it, it became, oh, have you got any? Because I'll need some for Monday morning. So um, it just became more of a, a regular thing. And then slowly but surely everything just fell away from there. Yeah. So you started taking it because it made you feel good? It did. At it a made, time in your yep. life when everything else was bad? Yep. It numbed the pain and um, made me feel in, empowered. It made me, mm. yeah, feel, feel like superwoman, really. And you started on a pretty hard one, didn't you? You didn't start with cannabis or some of what people call soft drugs. You you started with ice. Yes, yep. Which we are told is very, very addictive. Yeah, I didn't start to a later period in my life either. It was really interesting, you know. So, so how old were you when this oh, was? I was about 35 and I'm 38 now. Yeah. So it was, it was a, you know, very, very short period, but so much happened in that short period. Yeah. And you were addicted within a month within a week oh straight away straight away straight away yeah and that addiction is such that does that now take priority in your life the drugs it, it did at the time definitely mm. it took priority over everything yeah even the kids definitely yep. yeah unfortunately you know the girls they don't they didn't deserve it you mm. know georgia and paris they are um beautiful girls they did not deserve it at all and, and mm. unfortunately I, I wish I could take it back and change it but um, what's done is done and I believe that God has a purpose in my life I really Absolutely. believe that everything happens for a reason Absolutely. and I think too for them to see what I've done and what I've been through is just going to make them stronger too you know it's going to mm. make them stronger and say that that's not what they want for their life and that they can become better and um you know we can work through it together yeah and um I, and, and have a more of an understanding whereas i think that it, it's it's a real eye-opener you know yeah. i don't think it's a great thing for them too you know but so um i think it's gonna it's not gonna be a bad thing in the in their it's life it's been an important life lesson for that's them. right exactly yeah so we know you ended up at duralong um you were in addiction there you're in your sort of early 30s um, and you say this was only three years ago. So how did things get so bad so quick? What, no. what happened to you? I ended up with AVOs on me. Um, I breached them eight times and then I ended up in custody. Um, and then I became part of the drug court program mm. to um, to get out of custody and to be able to, and they, they select a program for you. And I was fortunately, I. Uh, I was selected to Duralong. I, I remember going in when I was in custody, I was praying for a miracle and um, and it was very hard to get into Duralong. Nobody, mm. all the girls wanted to go to Duralong that were in there as well. And, and this week, it took a week and a half and I got a phone call from Barry, which is the man that works at Duralong, mm. to do a phone assessment mm. on me. And he said, um, you know, Yeb, yeah, you've been accepted to Duralong and um, they pick you up from the court on the Monday. Yeah. And then, then that's part of the program. You were telling me earlier that um, as soon as you got into your cell when you were in jail, you you cried out to God. I did. I did. I said, Lord, I need a miracle. Yeah. I need a miracle. So you were in tears? I was. I was. It was awful. Yeah. It's a really, really scary place. And how I ever thought, and like I said, being raised in a Christian home and, and in, an, in a Christian church and a Christian school, you know, it's something that I never ever thought would happen to my life in my life. But um, I don't believe that God gives you more than what you can handle. I really don't. Um, I didn't think I could handle it, but He was always there, and um, I, I believe I'll be able to help other people to be able to not go through the same things that I've been through. And you knew enough um, as a Christian to get on your knees and, um, and and cry out, God, I need a miracle. Oh, you do. When you're in there, you do. When you're in custody, you. You've got, yeah. you know, you, you, you'll do anything. You're a bit like, not the prodigal son, but the prodigal daughter. <laughs> You've come back and asked, God, please help me. I'm, yep. I've am i stuffed it up. I have, yep. Yeah. We talked quite a lot about um, Amy's earlier life, that Christian upbringing she had, um, but how things really took a downward turn when her marriage uh, ran into relationship problems. Uh, and 
Yeah. She was introduced twice, and within a very short period of time, you find yourself in jail. I did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're talking just, yeah, because all this has happened in the last three years, hasn't mm, it? It's, it has. Yeah. Anyway, um, in jail, you cry out to God in tears to give you a miracle, and lo and behold, he he's faithful to his word. He, he was. gives you a miracle. He takes you to Duralong. Definitely. Yeah. So you had never been to Duralong before? No. But never. you'd heard of it? I have, I had. All the girls talked about Duralong. Yeah. As being such a beautiful place and uh, definitely one of the re best rehabs that, you know, you can get into and, and how nobody could get into it. Yeah. But you were there within how many days? A week and a half. A week and a half. Yep. No three-month waiting list for you? No, no, no. Some of the girls had to wait, you know, up to six weeks to be able to yeah. get into a place. But um, When God does a miracle he definitely he, he moves quite quickly so you found your way to do along was it everything you expected or were the things different than you expected it was definitely different than what i expected but it was so beautiful it, it took my breath away in what way was it different what, what was your how did you imagine it and what was the reality oh like? nothing like it was going to be i just expected it to be one place where everybody went and slept and you know oh, whereas so one building yeah that's right whereas as we've got you know, I think it's 320 acres or something crazy like mm, that mm. Um, of property with, with cabins. And, you know, I walk out each morning and there's five beautiful little ducks out the front of my house yeah. chirping away, you know, and um, we have a peacock that walks around. And, yeah, yeah just yeah. things, just um, uh, disbelief, yeah. So when you say it was different than you imagined, different, but in a good way. Oh, in, in a beautiful way, yeah. Yeah. And the programs, how are you finding with the, the programs? The programs are great. It's a really, really good program. I've learned so much. I feel like I've definitely become a better person for mm. it, um, more understanding. Um, you know, you know, there's so many different people out there that come from so many different places and to hear different stories and mm. see that, you know, you're not, you're not the only one. Yeah. And to see what other people, you know, to see their struggles and, um, yeah, it, it's really... Um, it's really quite therapeutic and it's also sort of, um, you know, you can learn so much from the other participants as well as the staff, I think, can't Yeah, you? definitely. Yeah, and you all support each other. There's a real community feel. Definitely. Having the staff come from the same place that we've yes. come from makes a huge difference. And, you know, I'm hoping that one day I'll be able to do something similar. Yeah. And you've been there now, how long was it? Five, five months? months. Five months, yeah. And what's the biggest change in you, do you think, in those five months? Gratitude. Gratitude. Definitely. Yeah. Tell me more about that, gratitude. Definitely um, more grateful for what I have in my life. Mm. You know, I took a lot of things that I had for granted. Yeah. And um, to, to realise how blessed and how lucky I am to have such a supportive family and, you know, two beautiful girls that have supported me and st stuck by me the whole way through, to have that still I and mean, see so many people that don't have that you know people that don't mm. have family that come and see them you know my mum and dad they come to chapel every single Wednesday night to um to see me in in chapel and mm. a lot of people don't have that you know yeah. and and I have gratitude for that yeah that surprises me a little but in a good way um because um yeah given all that's happened to you in your life and the um you know the bad times that you've endured um, you are still grateful for what you, for what God has given you in your life. Yeah, definitely. Um, doesn't sound as if there's any resentment or bitterness there. No, no, not to, not towards that. Definitely, maybe towards my ex-husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm, like, but I'm dealing with that, and they're helping me to deal yes. with that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Now look, we know you're a Christian. You are a Hillsong person, so chapel nights at uh, Duralong were totally sort of. Um, weird to you in the way that they are to those sort of guys there that have never been to church before um how different is the style of worship at Duralong to um and, and which church do you go to on a sunday um Tugra lakes yeah how different is the style of worship um with the salvos than to the hill song that you're more used to um at chapel it's definitely a, a little bit like hill song it's yeah. a bit like going to youth because everyone sort of gets into it but the salvation army church is it's a bit different but um i love the speaker at um our at Tugra lakes chapel he's um he's fantastic i always get a great message you've got a good minister there. i love it yeah. let's let's give him some credit what's his name you've got it's gone it's you've, you've forgotten it to be your tongue. <laughs> he'll come back don't worry but Tugra lakes is 
is your church now? Do you yes, it is. It is church? my church, yes. And how different is it? Here's somebody who used to go to a mega church, Hillsong. Now you're going to a church, well, by comparison, is it's really quite small. Um, how does that fit with you? Which do you prefer? What are the pluses and minuses of each, do you think? Um, I think all of them have pluses and minuses. I've definitely been through a lot of other churches as well growing up. I, I went to a Baptist school. Um, so we had to attend church every week. So I'm definitely a bit of a chameleon when it comes to things like that. Um, mm. You know, I think my parents started off in an Anglican church when I was a lot younger. And mm. um, we also, we moved up to Newcastle. So I, it's not always just been Hillsong. So I'm right. very adaptable when it comes to things like that. Yeah. So it's not just one I particular I just look for dominant. a great word, you know, a really good message. Yeah, is, is you're not worried about the label no, and the denomination. No, not at all. Not no. at all. I know Rick, who's our station manager here, um, he likens the denominations to ice cream. Um, you know, we're all Christians and, and it's all, you know, it's all ice cream. Some ice cream is strawberry flavoured, some is That's chocolate right. chip, some is vanilla, you know, some is uniting, some is Anglican, some is Baptist, but, but it's still Christianity, like That's it's right. still ice cream. That's right. Yeah. We all worship the same God. You all worship worshiping the same God. And the future, Amy? What's going to happen for you in the future? I'm doing a drug and alcohol diploma um, currently online at the moment. Yeah. Um, I've just begun that. Um, I'd definitely like to do something in social working and to be able to give back to somebody for the same same thing as what I've been through. Yeah. So you would like to sort of, you could almost be sort of game, was it poacher turn gamekeeper? You could sort of, you could start helping people who have been through the addiction that you have been that's that's what I believe. I, I'm feeling like that. I, I believe God's opening doors for me at the moment. Yeah. And um, we'll just see where where my journey goes. And we're back talking to Amy from the Duralong Transformation Centre. Amy's been at Duralong now for five months. Uh, she does come from a Christian background, um, but I imagine that this journey you've had uh, over the last three years, Amy. I know you're in a good place now and I know you've come back to God and we were talking about you being a bit like the prodigal daughter but what's this three year journey of drug addiction and breakup of a marriage what's that been like as far as what's it done to you as a, to your spiritual nature did you doubt God you said earlier you were angry with him to begin with did you ever think that he'd abandoned you well Yep. How has it affected you as a Christian to have one of these terrible, terrible things happen in your life? Definitely. I definitely um, felt like I'd been abandoned and um, I, I couldn't understand why, you know, why me? You know, I, I always questioned that. Mm. And, um, what have I done? What have I done that's so wrong? You know, but I really believed that there was a purpose behind what God was, I had to, what he was doing in my life. Yeah. Do you know whether I was unhappy in that marriage or not? I would have stayed, do you know, and I really believe that everything happens for a reason and mm. um, and the doors are just opening for me. So this has been a journey. Did you sense God with you um, at all times during this journey or did you perhaps sense times when he He wasn't there? Once I'd gone into custody is definitely when I when I reached back out, when I got down on my hands and knees and just cried. Yeah. That was when I, I was desperate. I was desperate and um I asked for forgiveness and, and realised that, you know, I had I had done things. Not that he'd turned his back on me, but mm. probably that I, I had also turned my back on him. Yeah. Many people would sort of think that going to jail, if that happened in their life, that was really a terrible, terrible thing. But the way you describe it, it was almost like a, it being a good thing for you. I believe that um, if I didn't, I, I would still be out there doing exactly what I was doing before. Mm. And it definitely changed my life and, and made me realise. And, and it does, it makes you realise how grateful for what you do have in your life and, and for the small little things as far as food goes and your clothes and stuff like that for what what you can wear, how you have a choice each day to wake up, you know. Yeah. Um, it, it, it takes away everything from you and... Um, it, that that's where I definitely believe that my gratitude came from. Yeah. And on a brighter note, um, how are Georgia and Paris now? Your two kids. Yeah, no, they're great. They're yeah. really, really good. Georgia's um, 
George is working um, in childcare, mm-hmm. and um, and Paris Cher, yeah, she's beautiful. She's um, she's the younger one. Yeah, she's my younger one, and um, yeah, she's on school holidays uh-huh. at the moment. So um, I'm about to spend a couple of days with her as well. So they're letting me go home to um, spend some time with her with, yeah. with the school holidays. So. Yeah. And is this the first time you've had sort of? overnight leave from Duralong or have you had that before? Uh, I do get every second weekend overnight leave and I get a day leave on the Saturday yeah. but um, they're giving me a special leave to go and spend some time yeah. with her so I'm so Still excited. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I can't right. wait. And, and how would you describe your relationship with them now? Is it, is it did it suffer and, and is it now improving or how has that been over the last couple definitely, of years? Definitely, definitely suffered a lot. Mm. You know, I, I've got a lot to make up to to my girls but um they're very understanding and um and we talk about everything that's one thing that we do is we talk about everything we're honest about everything and um there's nothing that i haven't told them that they don't know and um i can i want to continue that so that we can have that that close bond i want to raise my girls to be independent and Mm -hmm. um you know don't feel like they need to rely on anybody else or anything like that and and not make the same mistakes i did except god we can rely on him. That's right. Always, 100%. Always. Yeah. Look, it's been an absolute delight to talk to you this morning, Amy. Um, and I think you are a reminder that, you know, bad things can happen to Christians as well. Yeah. Um, we are, we are, as we said before, we are not immune. Bad things happen. We've only got to look at the book of Job in the Bible where he sits on that ash heap uh, for month after month crying out to God in his misery why me God what have I done to deserve this and that sounded a bit like yep. like you so we do have we do have troubles we have strife we have bad things happen to us really bad things at times like happened to Amy but but God didn't abandon you not at all and when you cried out to him God I need a miracle he was only too happy to say right this is what I'm going to do for you amen to you to do it along Yep. Yeah. Okay. Give all our uh, best regards to everybody back at Duralong. You'll be bopping away at Chapel Night tonight, will you? Yes, definitely. Waving your arms around. My I'm... mum and dad and Paris are coming tonight are to they? Chapel as well. So all yeah, right. I'm really excited. So it's going to be good. It will. And it'll be a nice roast meal on a cold winter's it night. It will. It will. It'll be good. It'll be good. Okay, thank you so much, Amy. Give our regards to everybody back at Durong, including Major Gavin, who is the, he's the boss man there, isn't he? He is, he is, and he is great. Everyone tells us how great he is, and all the staff. They really do make a difference. I hope they know that. But talking to these people from Duralong, we we know they make a difference. You've been listening to an encore presentation of the Duralong Stories, which can be heard live every Wednesday at 10 a.m. and repeated 8 p.m. Sunday and 1 a.m. Wednesday, right here on 94.9 rima.cc.